Love it or hate it, the CEO Crates Warehouse is one of the most talked about and polarizing businesses in GTA Online. It's well known for having people grind the hell out of it in order to make a big sale at the end of it all, especially during double money weeks. There have been a number of significant changes to how the crates work since the Criminal Enterprises DLC released back in July 2022. So in this video, I'll be explaining the most efficient ways to stock up your one warehouse or five and explaining the good, the bad and the ugly. So without further ado, let's get to it. Before you are able to buy a warehouse, you need to get yourself a CEO office and they start at $1 million. With the most expensive location costing $4 million at Maze Bank. Location for your office isn't massively important, but ideally you'll have either the Maze Bank or the Arcadius building as they are more central, meaning sourcing crates will be a little quicker. It's up to you what styling you give your office at a substantial cost, but none of these will affect the money you make from the warehouses. You will most definitely want to buy the accommodation add-on at a cost of $795,000 as this will allow you to use your office as a spawn location, vital for sourcing crates, which I'll get to later. Anything you need, boss. When it comes to warehouses, it's go hard or go home. So you'll only want to buy a small warehouse for 250 k if you just wanted to help feed your nightclub business and you don't plan on using the warehouse to source and sell your crates. So for the purpose of this video, we'll only concentrate on the large warehouses so we don't get too bogged down with numbers and data. There are a total of eight large warehouses to choose from and they start at $1.9 million and go up to 3.5 million for the most expensive. Each warehouse will hold a maximum of 111 crates. Having a more central location for your warehouse is better as source emissions can be from anywhere around the city. If you're planning on buying more than one warehouse, you definitely want to keep them close to each other for when you're requesting your staff to source some crates for you. The five I ended up purchasing are these ones here in green. The logic behind it is that they are all in close proximity to each other and pretty much in a straight line, making it very easy and fast to get to each one when I want my staff to source a crate. The five I bought cost a total of $13.4 million. Now you have your warehouse, here comes the best bid that everyone enjoys, sourcing the crates. There are two ways to source crates. One way, which has been around since the crate warehouses were first introduced, is sourcing them through your computer in your office, or more recently through something like the Terabyte. There are many different sourcing missions, but they follow the same premise. Travel somewhere, pick up the crates, deliver them to your warehouse. Some are harder and will take longer than others. The easiest ones you can get are when you simply pick up a slow ass van and drive it to your warehouse. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? These are very solo friendly. The other type are when you have to drop crates back individually. Not too solo friendly as you'll have up to three crates to return, but can be done with relative ease. There's also been a new mission added since the update, which sees you traveling out to sea and blowing up some underwater crates. These have been notorious for being way too hard for just a simple crate mission. If you'd like to see the best way to complete this particular mission, I've made a specific video on that, which I'll leave a link for in the description below. Another new mission that's been introduced sees you stealing a van of crates from an auto shop. The best way to complete all of these is to set up job warping before you start a sourcing mission. This will be a massive time saver when you get the jobs where you have to drop crates back individually.
I've made a job warping guide too. Again, link will be in the description. You also want to have a scuba suit equipped at all times while doing these missions, just in case you get the underwater one, which I mentioned earlier. There are 11 types of crates that you can get, but none of this matters as they will pay exactly the same. There are three types of crate sourcing that you can start, where sourcing one crate will cost you $2,000 each time, two crates will cost you $8,000, and three crates will cost $18,000. You always want to source the three crates. As mentioned earlier, many of the jobs will be just one van to deliver, which will be the same job regardless of how many crates you choose to source. Three crates are more expensive to buy, but the time you are saving is well worth it. When going out on a sourcing mission, you can leave your office faster via select helicopters you own. Ideally, you want to always take the buzzard, as it's quick and has homing missiles, perfect for the missions where other choppers need to be exploded. There will be a small charge of $500 each time you take one out. You can leave with a personal vehicle, but the cutscenes and getting to it will take longer. If you decide to source your own crates and get in three crates each time, it would take 37 source emissions to fill up one large warehouse. The time it takes on average to source crates each time is around 5 minutes, but there is a 5 minute cooldown to add on, making each mission 10 minutes before you can start another one. However, if you own two warehouses, you can bypass the cooldown by sourcing crates for your second warehouse in that time, and then keep switching back and forth between the two. Or alternatively, have a friend and take it in turn sourcing your crates and helping each other out. If a sourcing mission from one warehouse takes 10 minutes in total, and you have 37 missions to complete before filling up a full warehouse, it would take you a total of 6 hours non-stop grinding before you are done. But it would take the same amount of time to fill up two warehouses. A new way of sourcing crates, which was introduced in the update, is getting your warehouse staff to source them for you. Not only will they grab you some crates, but they also have some of the best, well-written lines of dialogue in the game. Yep. Sure. What's up? Yeah. Hi. Hey, sure. They also turn into ghosts when out sourcing. So that's pretty cool. Getting staff to source crates will set you back 7,500 a time and takes 48 minutes, or one in-game day, before they have it sourced and delivered. They can bring back either one, two or three crates, which is decided at random, or on rare occasions, even a special item, which can be sold for much more. However, using my own findings and those from others in the GTA forums, the chances to get one, two or three crates are not all equal. It looks like staff sourcing one crate has 65% chance, two crates have a 25% chance, and three crates has just a 10% chance. These numbers are not official, but from lots of data that has been gathered, it looks to be quite accurate. In real number terms, for every 20 source emissions you paid for, you'd probably get a total of 28 crates, costing a total of $150,000. This works out to around 1.45 crates every 48 minutes. So to fill a warehouse solely from staff sourcing, it would take them around 77 source emissions in total, at a cost of $577,500, and would take nearly 62 hours. If you only source crates for yourself, it would cost $666,000, but would be done in 6 hours rather than 62, but means you are solely sourcing crates and doing nothing else. I'll explain more of the significance of these numbers later in the video. Another good thing about staff sourcing crates is that you don't even need to be online for those 48 minutes, unlike other passive money-making ways. You can turn off your game, go do something else, and return to it 48 minutes later to see the crates delivered. The best and most efficient way to fill up your warehouse is by mixing in staff sourcing and sourcing them yourself. Load into your office and start a crate sourcing mission. When you've delivered the goods, go to the staff and get them to source you some crates. Hola! What's up, homie? Sure. Then reload into a new lobby at your CEO office and source the next three crates. Then just rinse and repeat for each warehouse. It's worth mentioning that since the update, you can source crates in a solo or friend lobby, rather than under constant threat in a public lobby. 
If you're not very bright, you probably complained that you can't access your computer in your terabyte to source these crates without being in a public lobby. But loading in directly to your CEO office is so much faster. Anything you need, boss. As mentioned before, it would take around six hours of constant grinding to fill a large warehouse. But getting staff to source some crates as well will reduce that time to around five and a half hours. Doing it this way would cost around the same amount as sourcing them all yourself, but with slightly less time and effort. There is another way to make a quick bit of cash during any downtime when you're not outsourcing crates, which came with the update. Now and again, your assistant will call you and tell you to return to the office to deliver a little shipment. These missions are very quick and simple, taking only a few minutes and pay out $50,000 each time. This is another reason why you want to think about which warehouses you buy as the drop-off will always be at these stops. You'll also sometimes get a different call from your assistant about a special item to pick up. There are a total of seven different special items you can get and each costs a different amount to source and a different amount to sell, with the best being the large diamond which will sell for $270,000. There is no selling bonus for doing these in a public lobby, so only sell these in a non-public lobby. Now onto the selling missions. Each full warehouse will sell for $2,220,000. There are three types of selling missions. You'll either have trucks, two types of planes, or a crappy boat. The delivery vehicles can be upgraded with certain parts. The Brickade can have armor and bulletproof tires added. The Cuban and the Titan can have armor and jammers fitted. And the tugboat can have armor and a speed upgrade. These will all decrease the chances of your stock getting destroyed when selling. So if you can afford it, these are advised. You only have to pay for these upgrades once, regardless of how many warehouses you have. A full warehouse will have multiple vehicles, so it's always best to have a couple of buddies to help you shift them. Activating Ghost Organization will keep you and your associates off the radar for three minutes, a must when selling in public lobbies. You do have the option to sell a selection of fewer crates throughout, but nobody cares. Now it's time to crunch some numbers and see if the CEO crates are really worth doing, so sit tight. To fill a large warehouse costs 664,500 and will sell for 2.22 million. That is a total profit of just over 1.5 million, which works out to be around 282K per hour. However, if you sold in a full public lobby, you'd get a 2% bonus for every player in the session, capped at 25 players. That means you could potentially sell a full warehouse for an extra $1.11 million, meaning a total of $3,330,000, leaving you with a pure profit of just over $2.6 million. That equates to just under $500,000 every hour. Or if you choose to do two warehouses in the same five and a half hour grinding period, that's equivalent to just under $1 million every hour. If you were to stack all of these details up over five full warehouses, they could potentially all sell for a total of over $16.5 million, leaving you with a profit of $13.3 million. This would take approximately 15 hours of pure grinding. That works out to almost $900,000 per hour. That though is the best case scenario. When I sold my five full warehouses with one in a friend lobby for reference and the other four in public lobbies, the total I received was just under 14.8 million. Selling all five warehouses in non-public lobbies would total $11.1 million, 
leaving you with a profit of just under 7.8 million, equivalent to just over 500,000 per hour, which is around half of what you'd get from selling in public lobbies. If you waited to sell these during double money event weeks and sold in full public lobbies, you'd make over $6.5 million from one full warehouse. Sell all five one after another, and that's an astonishing $33.3 million. This all sounds amazing, right? 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 Yes. Yes. But look at it this way. Crate missions suck. They really, really suck. Even with the best case scenario of five full warehouses selling in full public lobbies with no issues whatsoever, that's still at least 15 hours of non-stop sucky crate missions. You can, of course, just do these crate missions whenever you feel like it and then wait for double money weeks to sell them, which is what I would advise, unless you're really desperate for money and hate playing the game for fun. Alternatively, which is what I'm likely to do, is just visit the staff every so often and let them do all the work. Sure, it would take a total of 62 hours for them to fill it, but that's 62 hours for me to go and do other things and not worry about it. It should also be enough time for the double money event weeks to come around again, when you can sell your crates for massive profits knowing full well you did the minimum amount of work. According to GTAfandom.com, a large warehouse will only get raided once you have at least 78 crates and you've been inactive for 5 hours. If you do get raided, you can potentially lose all of your stock so you might want to keep your stock levels at 77 crates and then source the rest of the crates to sell during the double money event weeks. You need to remember that if you're quite poor to start with, there are a lot of upfront costs that you need to take into consideration before you can sell and make a profit. So you really want to have another means of passive income in the background. I've made bunker and nightclub guides, which are some of the best passive money making in the game. So I highly advise you go and check those out. Now back to the 1 million every hour figure. There are alternative ways to make the same if not more money from doing other activities in that time period, like mixing in payphone hits and auto shop car deliveries alongside heists, for example. In my opinion, these are much more fun to do and won't feel like a constant grind. But at least now you have all the information you need in order to make an informed decision. I'd like to say a big thank you to Carlos, Welsh Turkey and GTV who helped me with my 5 selling missions whilst making this video. Let me know in the comments how much money you've made from these and what your plan of action is now. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beatsdown and I'll see you in the next one.